Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. I've had a few questions recently about where I get my aperture dies from and I'm more than happy to share the places that I buy from but I wanted to give you some ideas today about how you can create apertures in your cards without aperture dies. So this is an aperture die, sometimes they're called peekaboo dies or cut-in dies or window dies. If you want to look for them you can google anything you can think of that might describe this and they cut apertures, holes in your card panel that you can then put over something pretty and that will peek through the holes. But you don't necessarily need an aperture die to make apertures. You can use individual dies to create an aperture die look. So you take a card panel and you take your individual dies, these just happen to be butterflies, you place them on in the arrangement you want, oops, the right way up, that would help. You can hold them in place with something sticky like a post-it note or some low-tech tape, something that's not going to damage your card front when it's run through the die cutting machine and then run it through your die cutting machine. So this is the kind of thing you get. With these dies, I've got butterfly shaped holes in my card. And the beauty of using individual dies with this is that you can create your own unique aperture and you can run it through more than once by adding in your dies again and running it again through your die cutting machine, which is what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna add these four dies back in, not the big one, because I think that would be a bit much. Pop that on there to hold everything in place. For ease of use, I am going to use my cuttle bug, and I've got a little shim in there just to help everything cut nicely. It's just a bit of cardboard. Then I'm gonna place my panel and my dies, and then I'm gonna add another bit of cardboard on top because I want to protect the front of my card panel. My cutting plates have got lots of scratches in them and I don't want those getting embossed into my card panel. So a bit of paper, a bit of laminated cardstock, some stamp packaging, that will stop my card from getting scratched up. And now we can peel off my post-it note my sticky note it's technically it's not post-it note it's just an unbranded one from amazon and i can pop out my butterflies and then we have a lovely aperture cut in the middle of the card in a nice formation and you also get the added bonus of having these bits left behind which you can use however you want so I'm going to turn this into a card now and then if you stick around toward the end of the video I'm going to show you lots of different ways that I cut apertures into windows using different dies that I've got. So do stick around for that. So the first thing I'm going to do with this is to add my sentiment. This is a little stamp that says happy birthday and I think it will nestle in quite nicely here. So I'll use my stamp positioner just in case I don't get it right first time. And I've got my set square there just to make sure that that birthday is all lined up perpendicular, that's the right word, isn't it? To the edge of the card panel. So I'm gonna pick that up, pop that back right in the corner there. And I'm gonna use black ink just to keep things simple. That looks good, but I'm going to give it one more bit of ink to make it a little bit darker. To create my coloured panel that goes behind the aperture, I've got a bit of mixed media paper here. So that will go behind there like that. To give it some texture, I'm going to add some dots with this embossing folder. So there we have some spots on there. So when I put that behind there, we'll see a few of them through the hole. So I've got some Distress Oxides here that I'm gonna blend onto the panel. Just want to do some tiny little pencil marks, 
just to indicate where I'm aiming for my most variation of colour. So I've got pink raspberry, sail bitter patina, shaded lilac. And I'm just going to blend like this, mixing my colours a bit. that over there and I get a bit of everything which is what I wanted. I'm also going to do a bit of blending down here because I need some to cut my focal point image from. I think with this one we'll just stick with the pink and purple. I've got this wide-winged butterfly which I will use. To add a bit of shimmer to my background, I'm going to splatter on using this very pale gold. And this will work well with the dot embossing that's already there. So the next job is to cut this butterfly out of this bit down here that I blended. So there he is, very pretty. And now I can pop this behind here but as usual with an aperture die I do like to have a bit of separation between the front panel and the back it just gives a bit of depth and interest to the card so I'm going to pop this up on craft foam I've added foam around the outside obviously but then also around the butterfly so that this bit is secure it's not flapping around I'm going to trim this down a little bit just to make sure that it fits entirely behind this and there's none sticking out. I've got a little bit of wiggle room as to where I place it so that I can get some nice colour variations. And I'm going to pop a bit of card there to keep everything level. There we go. And now we can stick this on our card bank. To add some foliage to my card, I've used this leafy die to cut one from linen texture cardstock and one from vellum, and I can layer them up slightly offset, and that will just give a nice little bit of something there for my butterfly to fly over. For a bit of something different to add to my butterfly, because quite often you'll see me use vellum to back my butterfly to give it some solidity. Today I'm going to use this pale gold glitter cardstock and that will work really nicely with the pale gold splatter in here. So I've got some tacky glue, spread it out with my glue spreader, pop my butterfly in, tamp it down and then pop it on the glitter. And I'm using tacky glue for this today because not a lot sticks to glitter, but I find tacky glue does a pretty good job. And all I'm gonna do now is fussy cut out my butterfly. I'll just cut most of the excess off and go around it with my detail scissors. So there we go, our little butterfly is done. I'm gonna stick these down I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the back of this vellum, just a tiny bit, and anchor it here on this solid bit of card. These bits can lift up and add some dimension. Same with this one. Pop this on here, offset with the vellum one so that you can see both of them. So I'm going to add the butterfly by rolling a mini glue dot into a little sausagey ball shape and sticking it to the butterfly there on his body. But I think I'll also add one either side at the base of his wings, just so he's very securely attached. 
to give his body a bit of dimension and shine I'm going to add some glossy accents up the middle and onto his head and I've got some pale gold Nouveau drops which I'll add in a few places as finishing details around my aperture So there we go, that's one Aperture card created not with an Aperture die but with individual butterfly dies. And I really like how this has turned out. Don't go anywhere because coming up I'm going to show you lots of other Apertures that I've created with individual dies rather than dies specifically created for that purpose. A really easy way of cutting Apertures into your front panel is to use basic shape nesting dies. So here I've used three circle dies. These are stitch circles, but that doesn't matter because the bit that I'm after is this bit here and the stitching doesn't show that's on the circles that I cut out. But there's a, a nice arrangement of apertures, a nice rule of threes, three shapes, three different sizes, and I can put something behind that. So here's a bit of uh, mixed media background from my pretties pouch, my leftover background pouch. And that's what that would look like through those apertures. And I really like that look. I did the similar thing with hexagons. So if you didn't want to go so big, you could repeat some of the smaller sizes. With this, you could line them up so they look a bit more like honeycomb, but I went for a, a random arrangement. And with this one, my circles are in the top left corner. But I could easily turn it over and have them in the bottom right corner, or I could arrange them towards the middle as I did my butterflies. Same thing here. I could have the card this way up, that way up, that way up, that way up, whichever way. So that was the hexagons. And now we've got some stars. So I've got three nesting star dies here with two little stars from another set so you can mix and match your dies don't have to all come from the same set and with this one make a lovely christmas card i think i could draw the strings down and pretend these were star shaped decorations hanging down there and i love that look so here we have some apertures that i've created using leaf and flower dies so with this one i have arrange them so they look as if they're fluttering across the page like this, maybe falling leaves. They could come from any direction. So they're going in a diagonal. This one I did with, these are flower centers from a flower dye set, well, a few sets actually mixed together. And I made this pattern. Now these didn't cut particularly well, but that's not a bad thing because some of the holes are cut, so you've got some aperture there, but you've also got some embossed shapes, which adds a bit of variation to it, I think. So this one here, I cut using these dies from a variety. There's probably about four or five different die sets there. Just arrange them on, cut them out. And again, you can have that in any orientation. You could have them running in a band down the side there, whatever you like. One thing to be aware of when you're cutting with dies from different sets is that they're not necessarily all the same thickness. So some might cut beautifully and others might not cut so well. You can get around that by running your panel through your die cutting machine several times, one for each style of die. So with this one, where's it gone? This one here. I could, these are all from the same set, so I'd run it through with these, then I'd run it through with these, and then I'd run it through with these. So that I'm running the same thickness dies through together, and then you'll get a better cut. Sometimes it works just doing them all together, sometimes it doesn't, you just have to experiment with what you've got. With this one, I used small tag dies and tumbled them down the page on one side, or, or the panel rather. If you've got something like this, where it cuts out a little circle that would be in the front of the tag here, you can always keep those and put them back in afterwards. So 
that it's obvious what they are. So someone not well versed in paper craft might not recognize these as tag dies, but if you put the little circle in, they might see the tag shape. And of course you can cut letters with your letter dies to create apertures, which is what I did here. Again, if you want to, you can pop the middle part of the letters back in, but for some style of letters, it can be quite fun not to have the middle parts, but it really depends on the dies you've got and the word you're trying to make as to whether you need to put those back in or not. But that's another way of creating apertures. And as well as letters, you can do numbers. So this is a number three. It hasn't got any little holes in it. Uh, so it's really easy to cut. And that would be great for a, a birthday card for a child who's three or a three third anniversary or something along those lines. Now this is a die that cuts out a net. So when you cut it, you get that hole. You could use that if you wanted, but you can also reinsert the net once you've got all the bits out, or you can leave some in the right way up, but you can, if you want, as I say, reinsert the net and then you've got something that looks like an aperture die you could put the net flat on the background you could glue the net straight flat onto the background and have this bit raised above it if you want it all depends again on what you've got and uh, what looks best with your particular dies but for this I would be tempted just to do it like that. I think that looks quite nice. So with this one, I went through my stash and found six small heart dies, arranged them on here and cut them out. So I've now got a little row of bouncy hearts and I've got some foam here just because what I want to do is make some holes. So my hearts are dangling from little holes That'll make sense in a minute. So I've got my T-square ruler, I've lined that up and I've got a paper piercer and I can use this to pierce holes through my paper. If I want to be really accurate, I can use the measurements on the ruler and I can make it look as if my hearts are dangling. You could, if you were so inclined, actually stitch this with some thread. But if you want to do faux stitching, once you've punched your holes, pierced your holes, you can just run a black pen or whatever colour you fancy along those holes and they will look as if they've been stitched. So that's another option. You could even punch a swirl behind your hearts if you wanted. And finally, I've got this set of leaf dies. Now this looks a bit like an aperture die, but it's not. They're all joined together and I've never separated them because they're more convenient like that for me. But I just pop them on a panel and cut them out like that. And I think they look great as an aperture. There's a bit of a swoop to this particular one. I could even do it again and cut a bit there so it goes all the way across. Or I could find a couple of other leafy dies to add here to fill up those gaps. So that's another option. If you've got one of these dies where they're all joined together, then you can use them like an aperture. One last tip when you're using individual dies like this letter say, is make sure you take these excess bits of metal off of your dies. Because if you run it through the die cutting machine like this, these bits are going to emboss into your card panel and you'll be left with marks. And I just snip these off, either snip them or bend them off with a pair of nippers. And then you won't get those marks when you run it through a die cutting machine. Right, thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this video helpful. Maybe it's given you some ideas of apertures you can create with simple dies in your own stash. If it has, please do let me know in the comments. Please do come along to the Facebook group and share your creations. And if you want to see more from me, do subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.